Hey everyone, it's Data Science Jay here, and today I'm gonna to go over the three resumes that I use throughout my career at different stages. The first one that we're gonna go over is the resume that I used during uh, graduation when I was a senior at university. The second one that we're gonna look at is the one where I had just landed a job in Silicon Valley and wanted to get a new job, and so I prepared my resume after a few months of just working somewhere. And then the third job that we're gonna look at is the resume that I uh, never actually use, but the one that I prepared for after working at uh, companies like Jobber and Nextdoor as a data scientist. So that one's gonna be the experience resume. All right, let's dive into it. All right, so this is my first uh, resume that I used as a basically senior looking for a job as a new grad. So I just come out of my junior year internship at Cisco. And out of the bat, you could see that my first experience as IT data engineering intern. Now. If I'm gonna be frank, that wasn't the name of my internship role. It was something more like IT engineering intern, right? But because I was shooting for data science roles, I just made it data engineering because effectively it would kind of help with a lot of that kind of resume parsing matching. Like a lot of recruiters basically kind of look at the first or two experiences on your resume and see if it matches up with the position role. And um, for myself, I just wanted to give myself kind of an edge. Now, if you can look at my uh, experience, I did use bullet points, so that's a plus one for me here. The resume overall kind of just looks kind of, eh, it's like nothing really kind of sticks out. Yes, I did some projects. Yes, I was president of this club that didn't really exist. Uh, don't do that. But overall, generally, uh, as you can see from here, uh, it's a pretty decent resume. I think some of the things that I would probably redo is I'd probably make sure that I actually knew these projects really well. Like, I don't think I actually managed the project flow of passenger facilities, overhead trolleys, and bus traffic engineering. Uh, if I did, I definitely don't remember it. But specifically, I think um, what you really have to remember is defend your resume, right? And so I don't think I was too worried about this experience right here because of the fact that I knew that any kind of data science role I was looking for, they're gonna ask me about my recent uh, engineering internship at Cisco, right? Because this is more related to the data side. And so there I could talk about how I did write Hive scripts, database design, and data table auditing. Now, one thing I didn't do well though, is you asked me uh, how to write a Hive script with SQL, they probably would have expected that I had that knowledge and I didn't really, I was just working with a mentor the whole time. So that's probably why I even failed a couple of interviews was because they assumed that I knew SQL from this. I did develop a machine learning algorithm though um, in R. I mean, could definitely talk about that. But yeah, just generally, I think uh, one thing I could have also additionally done was just to add a little bit more info on the business impact here. These are all kind of like scripts and small things that I've done to like, you know, improve IT case help area, but I didn't really quantify how much impact it is. At the same time, one last thing I want to add is that if you are an intern and you add that you increased, you know, X metric by like 80% or something, I'm going to be pretty skeptical that you like accomplish that as an intern just in general. So maybe don't overdo it as well. Um, I've definitely seen that on the other side where people just add that they had this huge tremendous impact and it's like, come on, you were an intern for three months, you probably like helped out, but you probably didn't do that much, right? So be a little bit realistic as well. I think people understand that, you know, you're gonna over exaggerate a bit to uh, help land that first job, but um, don't overdo it. All right, so this is my second resume. I used this when I was looking for a new job right after actually landing in Silicon Valley as a data analyst, marketing analyst, wasn't quite sure company didn't really have an exact analytical role for me. But basically I got there um, in August of 2015. Uh, and after a few weeks to like a few months, kind of realized I might've made a mistake. The company was kind of disorganized, wasn't working a lot on mentorship and uh, a whole swath of my team actually left within the first month. And so this is kind of the resume that I used to then kind of get me out of that situation into my next job, which is called Jobber, which was a startup. But, um, this is kind of like what I uh, kind of tried to use. And so as you can see, actually, I actually did a quite a bit of internships after the fact, um, and these really helped me get that first job. And so throughout my senior year, um, I worked as a research assistant um, at the Foster School of Business. This is in reality just um, one guy's kind of research project. He asked me to scrape corporation data, and I just did it. I just built like a really advanced scraper and it was something to add onto my resume. 
Um, then after that, I worked at F5 Networks uh, as a data science intern. And then they basically asked the same thing. They wanted not a scraper, but just a script that would mine the customer logs for data and create into structured data set. And I, it was probably the ugliest code I've ever written. Uh, but as an intern, I got it done. And then at the last one, I just kind of created, you know, at Socrata, just basically took a data set and made some like really interesting visualizations, right? So I'm giving you kind of the rundown on what happened at each one of these from a casual perspective, just so that I can kind of present, you know, what I wrote in terms of like a resume perspective, right? And so specifically here, you know, I added a lot of like kind of features like Scrapey and Selenium uh, and really was specific about how I use these tools because um, I think, you know, a lot of times they don't tell you to keyword stuff in your resume, but it is really helpful if they can match like a package that you use with like an existing framework that they also already have um, at their company, then it does actually give you an advantage in the interview process, especially if you're going for internships, right? Like we wanna hire interns that can get off the ball running. If I know that you use this Python package, then I could just kind of slot you right in into our uh, existing framework. One thing I probably could have done though was just again added more business value here. Um, you know, I basically generated these graphical uh, reports, but I didn't really talk about what it was really used for, right? And then ad additionally, in this last one, I um, definitely did use these different kinds of packages as well, uh, but I didn't really talk about how it really, how much sales volume it actually drove. Uh, and this is partly because of that resume boasting part I talked about as an intern but also because I think just having this, you know, title software engineering analytics, data scientist inter intern really kind of just boosted my portfolio anyway. And these were kind of big companies that did have some name recognition like F5 networks. And so that kind of, to me, kind of drew a lot more power towards these profiles. So lastly, for this current one, how I structured this was that I definitely did these projects, it definitely took a few months, but I had to take a lot of initiative to do these on my own as well. And so, Generally, I think full vertical stack analytics and tracking mixed panel events, I definitely keyword stuffed a lot of like these kind of keywords. Probably wouldn't need to do that so much anymore because once I did actually have a lot of recruiters screening calls, um, they probably could parse out the fact that I didn't know exactly how the Spark jobs worked, right? Or exactly how kind of mixed panel events work. But at the same time, I definitely felt like it was helpful to kind of get you know, your foot into the door by kind of changing kind of and crafting kind of like what your role was from this. So I was probably just like a data analyst and inflection, but the, one of the interesting things was that I could actually craft and work on different kinds of projects that would help me learn. And so what I did was like on the job, I learned, and then I decided to apply the things that I was just learning. Like I was just reading blog posts and stuff, and then try to just find a project that to see if it would add value. And a lot of them didn't because the company direction was kind of tough, but I gave myself that experience to actually go in and try to learn from it. So the last one that I think is pretty good is this building the tool from the ground up for the automated A-B testing analysis. Really highlighted that I did save hundreds of hours for analysts running specialized SQL queries. Um, I think specifically this is a great project to do if you are entry level data scientist anyway, is just finding some sort of script that can save people time. Um, even if it's like just seconds, you can really count like seconds into hours if everyone's using it, right? And so overall, I like this resume a lot. I definitely focus a lot more on experience. Again, I didn't really change the formatting much as you can tell. And then I pushed all the experience just down so that like my relevant portfolio projects didn't really matter as much. I did expose this URL, not a great technique, but uh, in the future, I would say that it's probably better to just put these links, these hyperlinks into these projects so that people can click on them if they want. And then that's what I do with the companies too. It's like, if people don't know about the companies, they can kind of click on these. Oh, well, these aren't hyperlinks, but I think when it shifted from PDF to pages or something, something messed up. But basically you would be able to click on this as a hyperlink and then actually go to the company page to understand how legitimate it is because there are a lot of like just small startups that hire people, hire interns, and then you can't really tell if, you know, the intern was just like for free working at this company that kind of like doesn't really exist or existed because of some nepotism uh, kind of deal, right? And so to give yourself credence, I think, just highlight, you know, the actual company that you worked for and link back to it in your resume so that they can actually go in and click and view them if they want to figure out if you know your internships are generally legitimate and obviously one last piece of advice is always i think put your experience at the front again you know i kind of crafted data analytics engineer 
I was still trying to kind of morph myself to figuring out if I wanted a data engineering role, a data analytics role. I said, why not just get the most of that, <laughs> the best of both worlds and combine into a data analytics engineer role. So I don't know if I would do that this time. I think this time I would just call myself a data analyst because I think data analyst is pretty common and people honestly do need to hire them. But I was shooting for data science roles as well. And so just, uh, it made me kind of sound like I had more experience that way. One last thing I want to quantify, this is not about kind of like completely changing your resume and your experience to sound the best you can, even if you're outright lying. Generally, I think a lot of it is just based on kind of like how you can curate the story, right? And like, like I said before, if you can't defend anything on your resume, then it's a huge red flag. Like immediately when they ask you about something and when they ask me about something about Spark specifically, because I only wrote one job and so I didn't know the intricacies. And so when they figured out that I didn't know the intricacies, they immediately canceled the interview, right? And so I think just, it's really important to just be able to defend every single thing on your resume or else you won't be able to pass that interview. But at the same time, you can embellish up to a certain point in which you just obviously don't embellish to the point where you don't know what your resume is talking about. All right, my last resume on here was the resume that I uh, never used, but basically prepared for after I left next door to start interview query. Of course, um, that actually went pretty well, so I never had to use this resume, but I added all the information I did anyway in next door. So at this point in my career, um, I had already gotten a few jobs. So I'd gotten the job at uh, Jobber, which then turned into Monster after we got acquired, worked there for two years, and then got a job in Nextdoor and worked there for one year. And the resume that I used to get a job at uh, Nextdoor was actually this right here, right? And you can see specifically that I quantify everything that I did pretty specifically at this point because I know exactly what I worked on and I could defend it pretty easily because it was very fresh in my brain. And if you can't like think about the stories that you worked on for the projects, definitely write them out and just memorize them because that'll be super helpful when it comes to actually jumping on the interview, right? Um, so specifically I wrote that I was the first data scientist at Jobber. Um, I scaled the ML algorithm um, to 10X user growth after acquisition by Monster, yes. Created an NLP chatbot. And then you can see that I actually also bolded the places where I wanted people to read just like saying increasing job match rates and revenue by 20%, right? Grew the app from three stars to 4.5 stars. And uh, specifically, this kind of just, you know, draws their attention to these areas. I think it does look a little dense though. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to fit a lot of experience that I worked on in two years into just like uh, the high level bullet points. And so at that point, it's almost like picking you know, like your four best projects that you can talk about and just putting them on your resume once you have this much experience, right? And after two years, if you can't choose four projects, then I think you might be running into a bigger problem there. <laughs> but yeah, generally try to choose the best four projects that you can that highlight the skills for the role that you want. For me, I was looking for another data science role that give me kind of like that full stack training. So I put basically the fact that I worked on everything across the board here. Uh, similarly for Nextdoor, now I like kind of specified that I was in more of a product role. So before it was a machine learning kind of data science role. This one was more of a product analytics one. Um, and then as you can see, again, I bolded up the business impact, right? So basically real estate churn went down by 6x when agents received the text message from a model that I built, right? And so given this, um, you could say that like generally, I think that's pretty easy to see the impact that you're doing. Um, additional things I would say, you, you could tell that I actually did highlight the companies now. So if they go here, it goes to nextdoor.com for this resume. And then lastly, for a headline, I actually wrote like a headline just because specifically I wanted people to know exactly what role I was familiar in and what I wanted, right? So this is like the specialization I have in product and marketing analytics and then doing practical machine learning. And then this is like the deep industry specialization I had specific to like what industries I've done a lot of research and work into and which I'll have an advantage kind of jumping out. So, cause I say real estate, jobs and recruiting, they can tell that then I'm a pretty good candidate for like startups or maybe other companies that work in like real estate like Zillow or Redfin or, you know, jobs and recruiting with like Indeed and Glassdoor and that sort of thing, right? Um, and also it helps you just like divert away from maybe recruiters or hiring managers that, you know, might not want you because, you know, if I say that I'm in product analytics, then I'm communicating that, you know, that's the role that I want. Right, and so if this is a machine learning engineering role and you're gonna ask me a leak code question that I'm not gonna do well for one, and then two, I probably don't want that role anymore either. And so 
Uh, your headline is a great way to just communicate what you want once you have that experience. So generally, I think this is pretty good. As you can see, I basically cut out all the BS and like the education and portfolio projects after you have that first few user experience. I encourage everyone to do so at the same time. Unless your portfolio project is making you money, then you can't put it in your experience basically after that. Or if you like did something really um, interesting, like you made like an open source Python package that everyone uses, that's actually something I did see. I was like, yeah, definitely put that at the top. Everyone wants to see that, right? So, cool. Um, overall, thanks for watching, you guys. If you guys have any um, opinions, comments, please add them in below and I'll respond and get back to them. Plus, uh, if you have any feedback on my resume, please let me know. And then I'll try to link these out in the YouTube description as well. Thanks. Bye.